Hi, and welcome to another episode of Haltech Technically Speaking. Today, we're here at Castle Hill Performance, and we're going to be taking a look at this 1984 BMW Alpina. A little bit of retro, a little bit of cool, so we're going to take a look at what the guys have done to bring it up to date. The guys have given this BMW a birthday, and by that, I mean they've pulled the engine out and given the bottom end a freshen up, they've ported the cylinder head, they've put a mild camshaft in it, and they've also added these multi-throttles. So there's six individual throttles on this engine to make it absolutely raw. It sounds incredible on the dyno, and it also picks up quite a lot of power. One of the things that's great about this setup is that we still want the engine to be drivable. So they've actually added an idle control motor to the individual throttle setup so that the thing still starts beautifully in the morning when it's cold, it idles up and it sort of drives the way you would expect a new car to drive. Because we're not going to be using all the motorsport features of the Elite 1500 or 2500 series ECU and this is a budget conscious build, the guys have decided to use the new Elite 750 ECU. It's got all the functions you need to get your engine started, running and driving well, and none of the motorsport features that you may not use in your application. The first thing you'll notice when we look at this engine is that there's no high tension leads or spark plug leads hanging off the end of the distributor cap. This is because we've converted this engine to direct fire ignition. That means that we've got one coil firing one spark plug per cylinder. The distributor's still in place because we're using the signal coming out of the distributor as well as a new trigger wheel that we've fitted on the crankshaft in order to give us a full direct fire trigger system. That means that the ECU sees the engine RPM off the crankshaft while it sees the engine position out of the signal that's now in the distributor. If we look on the intake side of the engine, you'll notice that there's not much wiring here. Well, one of the reasons for that is because we're not adding any of our advanced motorsport features to this particular engine. Our Elite 750 ECU's only got one 34-pin ECU connector, so they're just not as much wiring to do. We've still got all the sensors that you need to run the engine. So we've got our coolant temp temperature, there's an air temp sensor down the bottom here, we've got our throttle position sensor, we've also got a map sensor that is in, built into the ECU, but it needs to get its manifold pressure reference from somewhere. Because we've got multi-throttles, we've needed to add a vacuum log that takes a little bit of vacuum from each cylinder in between the throttle blade and the intake valve. This is called a manifold pressure log. And from there, we get our manifold pressure signal. We can also attach our idle control motor to this log. So these are the sensors that we need to get this engine up and running. But one of the nice things about the Elite 750 is we can also put a few extra sensors in to do some data logging and to help the tuner when the car's on the dyno. So for example, this car's got a fuel pressure sensor, an oil pressure sensor, and it's got the Haltech CAN-based wideband O2 controller. The wideband O2 controller, just like all of the Elite series, does our closed loop O2 control, and of course it does the long term O2 control. Meaning that while your O2 sensor is in the car, the ECU will keep looking at the O2 sensor and it'll keep adjusting the tune. This will make sure your car is running the best it can every time you take it out. So if you're converting your project car from a carburetor or mechanical injection, or even an early form of EFI like this BMW had, take a look at the Elite 750. It's a perfect ECU for a budget conscious build that has all of the features to get this engine running beautifully, but none of the motorsport features that you're not going to use on the street. Another great thing about the Elite 750 is that it's a single 34 pin ECU connector. So there's not as many wires in this system, so there's a lot less confusion in wiring the ECU up. It's a lot smaller as well, so a lot easier to mount inside the car. That tiny little package size with its map sensor inbuilt means it'll be nice and easy to mount inside this older car. Well, that's all from me today. I'm going to leave you with my friend Dale, who's going to do a dyno pull on this engine so we can hear these six individual throttles absolutely roaring. My name's Scott. As always, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.